attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Inspiration webinar. Inspiration Software is the embroidery line of G7 Solutions and Designs and Machine Embroidery. Our Inspiration Software line includes my block piecer, my quilt embellisher, Perfect Embroidery Pro, and Perfect Stitch Viewer, and the new Word Art and Stitches. Tonight's webinar features our MQE, which is My Quilt Embellisher, the perfect inspiration to finish those quilt tops. We have a wonderful team assisting us tonight. Dory, Manager of Technical Support, Nancy R., Chris L., and I would like to present you to our end quilter of MQE, Tamara Evans, who has over a hundred virtual quilts in her tool. <laughs> Again, thank you for joining us and enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Dory. And, and yes, actually, um, I probably have more than that at this point. Virtual quilting is my passion. Uh, it doesn't require um, anything but software. So I'm really excited about tonight's webinar. As you can see on my screen right here, I'm in my block piecer. This is a block called Attic Windows that I is going to be a free block that you can download. And um, Dory will let you know how to do that. And a couple of other things I'm going to give you to download that you can play with. But this is a new block I created. Uh, it's a traditional block, but it wasn't one that was in our library. And I'm showing it to you in my block piecer because I want to show you something really cool about this block. Number one um, is it's a six inch block and of course you can resize that to whatever size you want. But if I select the entire block and then come up here to the top left hand corner and click on my workflow tool and bring that up and select the hoop that I want to put it in. It's a six inch block, so uh, let's put it in a 200 by 200 hoop, which is this space behind it. And if any of you are not familiar with Block Piecer, feel free to go back and look at the previous webinars uh, because I do start at the beginning, which is at the bottom of the page, and work my, as far as where the recordings are and work my way up. So if you're not familiar with what I'm doing, feel free to go back there and uh, watch the webinars. And we also have a YouTube channel now that all the webinars are on. But I want to show you the cool thing about this block. I've got a six inch block here in my 200 by 200 hoop. If I auto build, which I just did, and I have preview it, it's all done in one hooping. I love that about a block. So you can do it all in one hooping, get these blocks knocked out really quick, and put them together in a quilt. And I'm all about processing those quilts and getting them out the door in any way I can. Last year, my family all got virtual quilts for Christmas. This year, I'm hoping to make that a little better. So um, this can be done in one hooping and your hoop, and of course you can make it any size you want, but I'm going to show you some cool things we can do with just this one block. So let's get out of my block piecer. I'm going to minimize this, and let's go to my quilt embellisher here. Oops, there we go. Now, what I want to do at this point is bring up that block and show you how to build a quilt in my quilt embellisher. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my library, and um, I have that block right here. I can pull it onto my screen. I want to double check the size by going over here in the properties menu to transform, and it is a six inch block, which is perfect. If I want to absolutely center that, I can right click on my ruler and click center origin, and it centers that on the 0, 0 axis. So right here, that's at 0, 0. And my whole block is selected. Now, what I want to do with this block, since I brought it in from the library, it is already grouped. If I had opened it, opened the file, 
uh, like you might do when you download the block if it's not in your library and just open it, you want to make sure it's grouped before you do what we're getting ready to do right now. The first thing would be, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, we've got the block selected. Um, you know, I want to turn this 45 degrees. So I'm going to click Rotate. Then I can come up here to my tools and I can click Copy here or I can right click and say Copy here or I could do a Control C. There's lots of different ways to accomplish that. So whichever method you're most comfortable with. And then I will click Paste or right click and click Paste. Now, Let's look at this in the sequence view because now I've got two blocks here. And you see the second block is highlighted. So I've got four different colors and four different colors. Now, I'm going to build a quilt right here on the screen. What I want to do at this point, because I have the second block that's sitting on top of the first one selected, I'm going to use the quick way. Um, is to select Control and Shift. Whoops, sorry. I just want that second block. Sorry, not everything. Hang on. There we go. And I'm going to click Control. Hmm. And for some reason, Shift. It's not moving for me. All right, it's grouped. Oh, there we go. Control Shift, and it will move along. I'm doing control shift and using my arrow key. So I'm not getting it out of line with the other one. It's staying on the same, um, I don't know if that, that same X axis, I guess that is, moving sideways. <coughs> Pardon me. And I've just shifted it over. If I come in here and zoom in close, I can see those two aren't quite touching. So I'm going to select the second block and just hold the control key because that gives me a smaller movement. So here's what I want you to learn from this. Control shift like this. Control shift and use my arrow keys. It gives me big movements. Okay. Control only and my arrow keys give me finite movements so I can make those little bitty adjustments. I want to zoom in pretty close. I still have a little bit of overlap. I'm at 90, 500, almost 600 percent uh, view here, so I'm pretty darn close. But let's just control and do a left arrow and squish that out. And actually, if I put up my grid, which you could do, it doesn't help in this case, but sometimes it does. Uh, you can line those up. So we've got that lined up. Now let's zoom back out. And if I select both blocks, then for those of you who aren't familiar with this, I'm coming up here to my ruler, right clicking, and say Center Origin. What that does is that puts it in line at 0, 0, okay? So now I've got the 0 axis going down the center and across um, the horizon, if you will, so vertically and hor horizontally. Now, these are grouped individually, the blocks. What I want to do at this point is select both of them and group them together so they don't come apart because I already have them oriented the way I want to, they're centered, and this time we'll do right click and copy, right click and paste. Now you notice it's added more um, colors over here to my color chart. I'm going to pick up the, oh, I shouldn't have let go of that. I'm going to pick up the, here's what we'll do. Let's undo <laughs> my favorite tool. These are grouped, right? Group. Then right click, copy, right click, paste. These are grouped. And now I'm going to simply rotate them. Click on the 45 degrees twice. And now I have created a block. 
I can do this again and again and again. So I really don't want it on point, but I like the way these look where they're rotated. So I'm going to select everything by doing a control A, or I could drag a box around it and group it again, then rotate it back. So, oops, one too many. So it's square, and then duplicate this one. So I'm going to select this. It's already grouped, you can see here. and I will do right-click, copy, right-click, paste. Now, when I do Control-Shift in my arrow key, it will move that over a little bit of a time. Here's a shortcut. If you zoom out, and I just use the wheel on my mouse to make it smaller, then those movements are much larger, so it doesn't take me as long to do it, and I'm all about that. Then I can zoom back in and use my control shift and now I just have the control key on to line that up exactly. And maybe I want it just one hair over because I'm looking at the outline. That looks perfect. If I want to double check it, I can select both blocks and check up here my horizontal alignment and I'm good to go. Now, I'm going to select them again. So I'm up to eight blocks of this quilt. I'm going to select them all again, group them, right-click, copy, right-click, paste, zoom out, Control-Shift, move that down until it's about where I want it. And that looks pretty close. Then I zoom back in. And I see that that's really not all that close. Use my control key, my up arrow, and um, let's see, almost lined up. Yeah, we'll give it another little click or two. Now, this whole process can be done much quicker if you have Perfect Embroidery Pro. What I would have done in that instance, because it has a duplicate function, I would select my block, which is in C2S, our native format, and I would say, give me four across and four down, and you can rotate um, and flip them as you want and preview all of it before you ever save it. So if you have Perfect Embroidery Pro, use that because it's really a lot quicker and it lines them up perfectly. If you don't, you can certainly accomplish it right here in my quilt embellisher. So now that we've got our quilt built, then we want to take, and the first thing I want to do, you see I have all these different colors. The way I'm going to audition designs um, is to select the whole thing and I want to resequence this by color because I'm going to deal with these blue squares here and the reds and all of the other ones. So I'm going to come up here and select color sort and click on that. And now you see I have only four colors to deal with. So if I want to apply something to all of these little gold squares, all I have to do is click on it and it and after I ungroup it, it will select only those squares. Okay, Dory, have I lost anybody yet? I don't think so, but boy, is that got a okay. nice secondary design. I know, isn't that kind of cool? And I haven't changed colors or anything. I really like this block. Show um, them the secondary design, and then I do have one question from one one. About going well, no, that's okay. Go ahead, because that'll be on another quilt. Okay. What's your question? The question is, is um, going back to where you started from, as, uh -huh. a, as a, a brand new hot off the press, just got my software ant, uh, question, I'm lost awesome. already. How do we get that block into MQE? Can you go over that just one more time? Oh, yeah, very simply. Dory will do it for you. <laughs> no, actually, um, this is a block that I created that I'm going to give to everyone. You can, of course, resize it, and there will be um, 
uh, where would they be able to find it, Dory, with, uh, um, if they download or if they go back to watch the webinar or somewhere in that webinar page, possibly? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Um, oh, sorry. I can, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it with their thank you note from the webinar. So everybody right. who attends will be getting it. Great. Great. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So they get the blog, and, and actually, I, I, I will tell you as I go along everything that I'm going to give you. The block is the first thing. So here we have a quilt that we built in my quilt embellisher, and um, I haven't changed the colors or anything else. At this point, I can do a lot of different things. I can audition designs. I can select certain colors and, and do that, and we've done this all along with blocks. We haven't done it with multiple blocks in a quilt, necessarily. So here's what we're going to do. I want to first select these blue squares because this is just an ideal area for us to put a really cool design or a um, um, applique, something. This is where it, it's kind of like the rest of the quilt is a frame for these five square blocks. So let's try some different things. The first thing I want to do is combine these four patches. So I'm going to select my, I have selected each one of them by holding down my control key and I click, 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 click. Now you want to be careful not to move them when you do this. If you see a little white space, just click undo and it'll put it back where it was and then click it again. Then I click on my combine tool. Now when I select that piece of artwork, all of it is one piece. It's not four different triangles that make up this square on point. It's one square on point. So I could do lots of different things with that. I could come up to my stitches up here at the top, and I could say, let's go to advanced stippling and select a design like... Oh, because it's artwork, I can convert it to any of these stitches. So let's do something fun. And you know, in all this time, I still haven't auditioned every single one of these stitches. I want to do, oh, let's do swirl flags and see what that does. And click OK. Now, let's, let's zoom in just a little bit right here. Um, zoom, click click just so we can see it and we'll zoom in a little bit more now I'm using my mouse okay um, so we can see it a little better when I get to this point in decorating I really like to get rid of my grid in the background because it's too many lines for me to look at so I simply come over to the left hand column and click to turn off the grid now I like that a little bit better then we'll come over here to the right hand side and look at our pattern length because that's really small and this is this is only a 24 by 24 inch quilt that we're playing with but I want my pattern length to be more than 10 millimeters now I really have no idea how big 10 millimeters is I just know I want it three times as big so I'm going to put in 30 and I like that a little bit better and you can keep fudging with it. You could do 31.5 if you want to make it fit in exactly, maybe a little bit more, but then you get the idea. And let's look at it in 3D and there's our stitches. Now, here's kind of an idiosyncrasy of combining patches. You see this run stitch right here? I really don't want that in the middle of there. I found that if you change your pattern length or your density, depending on what you're doing, just a hair, if I make that 32, I get an extra line. So let's make it 33 and apply. 
and I'm getting there, maybe 33.7. But if you play with the numbers, you can get rid of it a lot of times. If not, you can always go in and delete that line. Okay, That's just kind of one of the idiosyncrasies of combining blocks. But we're not going to worry about it because we can fix that. Now, let's try something different. In this one, I'm going to select all of my uh, blue squares and again, combine them. So I have one square on point that I'm dealing with. This time, I'm going to put a design in there. Let's go to our design library. And hmm, let's look at my quilt embellish or free designs. So you have all these. You can use them. I like this one. This is pretty. I can pull that over here. I can resize it to fit in that block. Now, here's something that's really cool. If I select the design and hold my control key down and select the backdrop, and then I come up here to the top to my alignment tools, I can select vertical align and horizontal align, and it will put that in the center of that block or that square on point without moving the square. So now it's a beautiful design. I can select it, and maybe I just want to quilt around it. Maybe I want to do um, some kind of uh, echo quilting. I can select it, right click, and say create an outline. And the, I'm going, I've got complete control on how far out that outline goes. I could put zero in there and it's going to be right up next to the whole design. Or I could put, you know, a tenth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, whatever I um, feel comfortable with. And I can audition different ones. And now you see, if we scroll in, there is an outline in that block. And if I look at my sequence view, let's go down to the bottom. My outline happens to be, because it's the first color on my chart down here, happens to be the same color as the background, but that's okay. I'm going to select that artwork, and with holding the control, while I'm holding the control key down, I also select the backdrop, okay, the blue square behind it. Then if I combine those, it cuts a hole around that design. Now I have an outline of artwork around that beautiful design, and I can convert that to any kind of stitches I want. I could come up here and say, let's do um, contour, which is um, going to go around that shape with the shape of the block. Yeah, that doesn't excite me too much. Um, I could put another uh, texture or advanced stipple design around it. I think I like, this is one of my favorites. I really like the simplicity of it. So I'm going to click on that um, diamond, and it will put that in. I do have complete control over the size of it here. So if I want to make that um, a lot larger, I can do... 12 millimeters, and I get rid of almost all of that run stitch, or we can do 12.4 and see what that does. And there you go. We got rid of all of the run stitches in there. So that's another option. Let's look at a different one, because you can do anything with this. I want to put an applique in here. And I'm first going to group these and um, by selecting all four of them, then I will combine them into one again because I want the same design to go through all of them. Then come over here and select my library down in the bottom right hand corner. And this time I'm going to do one of the blanket stitch applique designs. Now, you get these designs free if you go to one of the um, quilting and embroidery mixer events at a local dealer.
So I'm going to use one of those. And I'll pick the E for Evans in this case and just drag it in there. And again, I can select it with the backdrop, center it by doing my vertical and horizontal align. And I think that's a little small, so let's resize it. I could drag one of the corners out to make it larger, or I can come over to my properties box and click on the transform. If I'm doing a, an, a letter applique in each one of these blocks, then I'm going to make sure that they're all about the same height or width. So I want the largest measurement on all of them to be four inches. So I'll pick whichever one's largest. I've got maintain aspect ratio selected, so it will resize it proportionally, and then click apply. And that looks good, and it's still centered in my block. I can select, uh, oh, let me go back and select my applique. And again, one more time, this is how we create stitching around a design. I'm going to create an outline. I can make this whatever distance I want. Now, you'll notice this comes up in inches because I have selected inches on my ruler. I live in the imperial world. Every now and then I have to, you know, go metric, but not not willingly, usually. So I've got my distance here at 0, 0 0.08 inches. I'm going to make it, oh, let's do um, 0.15. We'll do it out a little bit further and say OK. So there is my outline. Then with that selected, I'm also going to select my backdrop, combine, so that the outline works like a cookie cutter in the backdrop, gets rid of the excess area. Now I have an E shape cut out of my blocks. Then I simply decide what I want to do with that. And, uh, oh, let's do a shape echo. This is one of my favorites. Up here at the top, I'm going to convert that artwork to a shape echo. And let's do the same shape as our block, which would be this one. Click OK. Now that's much closer together than I would like. So I'm coming over here to my properties box and changing the density, which is simply the distance between those rows of stitches from 5 millimeters. Here's where I've got to go into the metric world. Um, I'm going to make that twice as big. So we'll do 10 and see what it looks like. Hmm, that's not bad. Maybe I want to do 12 and apply that. So we can keep auditioning until we get the exact size that we want. All right. So, Dory, questions so far? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I keep getting lost. That's okay. Um, yes, we did have, we've got a couple new new people with us tonight. Great. And Welcome. They, one of them wants to know, are there guard, guidelines in MQE? Um, regarding sizing, you mean, and spacing? Guidelines to keep everything straight. Guidelines. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. We do have those. You just simply pull them down from the ruler like this. You can do left and right. I mean, you can set up anything you want. So if your, if your grid isn't doing it for you, you can pull those lines in absolutely to help you organize things. Okay. So you can do your blocks in my block piecer. Or you could do it in um, My Perfect Embroidery Pro. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And then right. bring it you in can... here. Well, yes. Um, what I was trying to do with this one was, was, was give everybody a block that they don't have. So this is one that I created um, and to share with you. But you could do the exact same thing with the block library that we have right over here built into my quilt embellisher. 
pick any of these or two of them. You don't have to use the same block. You can get a little bit more um, adventuresome. If you want to look at, um, let's see, what's a good example? Oh, diamond in a square. Okay, so maybe we want to do this argyle diamond mm -hmm. and put it next to, um, let's do a basic block. Um, three triangles and make those go around it in different directions. You can put as many different blocks as you want to. If you are doing a, uh, a sampler quilt, uh, you can bring those blocks in and, and actually I've, I've done a lot of sampler quilts and I found that a lot of those blocks are actually in this library in my quilt embellisher. Just resize them. You can recolor them. You don't have to go with the colors that are in here like a red and gold chevron, you can make that, um, you know, purple and chartreuse if you want to okay. and, and change the colors up. Okay. Super. So get creative. All right. Anything else? No, I like this quilt okay. that you're building. Could we continue? I know. It's kind of fun. Okay. So, so that gives you some ideas. Now, I'm going to kind of switch gears here. Same block. But let's open up a new page. And I've actually built a couple of other quilts with this block. And I'm going to give you these. This one. Well, Dory's going to figure out how to give you these. <laughs> this is one, same block. Looks a whole lot different, right? Yes. So now what I did here, I actually built this in my uh, or Imperfect Embroidery Pro, so it was very easy to line up the blocks. Um, but you can do the same thing in my quilt embellisher. It just takes you a little bit longer because we don't have that, that repeat tool. But if I have this set up, then I also saved, and I'm going to give you the backdrops for these, because I like to see after I convert to quilting exactly and let me move the quilt out of the way real quick here by selecting it. Here's a backdrop of that same quilt. Now, this is underneath your work table, okay? Um, so it is, it, you can't alter it. It's just the colors. And I saved this in Perfect Embroidery Pro as a, a JPEG or a, um, What's the one that starts with the P? P uh, not a PDF, but anyway, I saved it in a PNG. Yeah. Uh, and so you can bring that up as a backdrop. So I could decorate over the top of it. You could also create your blocks from it, but you already have the block, so you don't need to do that. Let's put our quilt back on top. Now, here's what I want to do. Let's look at our sequence view. Oh, my goodness. It is craziness. So I want to make this a simple quilt that I can get out the door. I'm going to select everything and I'm coming up by doing a control A or I could drag a box around it. Then I'm coming up here to color sort. I want to sort this design which is an artwork quilt um, by color. Now I have four colors to deal with. Very simply, I can select the gold once I ungroup it because you notice I pulled it in from the library. It comes in grouped. Let's ungroup and select just the gold boxes. Now, I can apply the same design to all of those. I want to do, um, oh, I don't know, I want to do a circle shape. Ooh, this would be pretty. Let's do this shape in each one of those. And now I'm going to zoom in on 3D so we can see it. And let's select them all again, that color. And I want to change the density from 5, which is really small. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Our, our programming staff is amazing. Um, their background is mostly embroidery and to have a density of 5.0 blows their minds but in quilting we want the distance between those stitches to be larger so 
I'm going to change that to 15 and let's see what it looks like. Oh, now that's much better. Now, let's see, I want to make sure I've got these lined up. Um, that, yeah, that'll work. So, um, actually, I'm going to select the background and let's lighten it just a little bit by selecting the background tool because it's the same depth as our quilt blocks are. I'm just going to light. Now we can see it much better. Okay. So I'm just giving it a little bit lighter look there. Now I'm going to take all of the, that was that one, um, the gold boxes. Let's right click in our sequence view and say collapse everything. So we're just looking at one color. Let's take the red. And I think what I want to do with this is just do straight line quilting down the quilt. Okay, so here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to select, um, not contour, I want to go to Shape Echo. And I'm going to select the box and click OK. Change my density again to 15. Click Apply. Now, you can see I've got a box in each one of those. What I want to do is to go to the Shape tool. And you would have to do this actually. Hmm, no, you wouldn't. Let's go back and select it. And I'm going to combine them, first of all so that it looks at them as one thing, okay, one object. It's kind of a big quilt, so bear with it for a minute. And my computer's memory is getting to be a little bit like mine. And we're waiting. We're wa okay, there we go. Now, I don't know if y'all can tell or not, but this box goes from the center right here around all of these. What I want to do with it selected is select my shape tool. Then here is the center of my design. I'm going to move that over here because I just want straight lines. And let's see if that's far enough over to accomplish that. And we're waiting and waiting. I'm going to get a new computer one day. You are going to do a song and dance, <laughs> yeah. aren't you? I am. I'm like, Tori. Okay, so now I have almost all straight lines. I need to come out, you know, just a tad bit further because I see the corners here. And that will give me all straight lines in those. Now, if you have perfect, well, um, you could also just go draw straight lines in there, you know, run stitches, and then repeat it throughout those blocks. But that seems more manual to me, so I don't do it. And it will come in a second. Any questions in the meantime? Yes. All right. Can right. see, we have one gal who isn't able to get her point across. She wants to know. Betty wants to know. Mm -hmm. She's trying to figure out is MQE can be used for an overall stipple on a panel being made into a quilt, not just individual blocks. Does that make sense? It does make it does make sense. Here's here's my suggestion, Betty. Um, you need to do that stipple, and that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to select this blue color, my blue blocks, and I'm going to make that stipple. So I'm going to come over here to my stipple, and you notice I haven't connected these. I haven't joined them in any way, shape, or form. If I go to stipple and convert them, it defaults to um, a basic stipple stitch, which will go inside each one of them. 
and I can tell from here now that my design, my, my top is not lined up perfectly with my background, but that's okay. I need to move it up a little bit. We can do that. I'm going to hold my control key down and just snug it up there so it's right where it should be. Okay. Now, what this particular stipple does is it goes inside that block, which would be okay. If you wanted them to go all the way to the edge, let's select the blue again, and we'll pick a different stippling. Uh, do stippling, uh, but instead of the maze, let's do Hilbert and apply that. Now, that goes front over the whole thing. And if I wanted to do this whole block in stippling, I could select all of the colors, make them one color, and um, do stippling so that I get that stippling all over it. If I want to change the size of the stippling, I just change the density. I can make it much larger. Let's do 10 on that one and apply. It was at 3. So I get a lot larger stipple going on. And if I wanted to do the whole quilt that way, I could. Then when you get to the point where you want to save it, and with this particular block, we can quilt it block by block, or we could go section by section. It just depends on basically the size of your hoop. This is a six inch block. I could select these designs and then um, copy them, save it, and stitch each block individually and line them up with the placement tools. But let me show you that in a, in a different quilt. Let's uh, move on. And I have another quilt for you. New page. I'm going to bring up the backdrop. This quilt is Attic Window 2. Now here, I changed the color on it because you can do that. And you can make it whatever colors you want. If I wanted to make this stripe saw behind it, I could make all three of these purple, combine them, and then it would be purple and green stripes behind it if you want to. So you can modify these in any way you choose. Let's look at our sequence view. Um, let me get out of backdrop. Let's go. First, we've got to bring up the design. Here's the design. And let's center it, center origin. Okay, so here is our uh, same block, only this time it's shaped, they're, they're grouped a little bit differently. They're still six inch blocks. If I wanted to take and make this whole block, whoops, after I ungroup it, remember it comes in from the library group so you can move it and it doesn't um, mess up on you. I'm going to select this whole block. I could combine it. It take, makes it one color. And I can change that to stipple. And I would want to do this in manageable, hoopable sections, if you will. And let's this time do the piano stipple, because I kind of like that one a lot. And I see that I'm not exactly on my backdrop, um, so let's select it, and actually, let's select the backdrop and scooch it just, we'll center origin that one. Okay, now maybe we're better. Okay, so I've got the stipple around it, just this block. And I can, I'm still not straight, am I? Um, hmm. Let me select all of my top and we'll move it over. Not quite that much. I'm just adjusting it. Sometimes they are a little fussy about lining up. Okay. Now I think I'm right on. All right. So if I look at it in 3D, here I've got my stipple over this block. I definitely want to change the density to 10. 
and apply. And I could keep going through each block and do that. Then I select the individual block. I would copy it, come to a new design, and paste. Now, this is a design that is 6 by 6 inches. You can do that over your backdrop, or you could simply, let's try another option here, create a new page. I can create an artwork rectangle, jump like that, resize it to be 6 inches, and make it 6 inches by 6 inches, apply, all right, now I can convert that to stitches, any of these, so then I could audition that on top of each of those designs, if I want to do a shape echo, I could do that, maybe we want to do, I don't know, a circle around each of those, and make it further apart, do, mm, 10 millimeters density, then take this design, copy it, let's come back to our main design and paste it, and see what that looks like over that block. Oh, it's underneath, um, <laughs> because I have artwork there, it's underneath that artwork, so we'll get rid of the artwork, or actually, we can just bring it to the front. Bring it to the front. There you go. So I could do it that way, and then save it design by design. The principle of doing this is this kind of the same as working with a long arm quilter, you know, a long arm machine with robotics. Except they got a bigger hoop than what we do. So. What we do here is we go block by block or section by section depending on how we want to create that design. Does that make sense? It Sorry. does to me. I'm there. Good. Good. Okay. So one of the things I want to show you or, or you to understand is you can decorate your blocks with anything you want to. Can you use the stitches in my quilt embellisher to change those and accentuate those blocks? Absolutely. If I just want to take these four centers here, or the, the square here, combine that and change it into stitches or put on, um, add an embellishment design to it. Uh, let's do, well, let's do a Celtic design. I can do this Celtic square, put it in there. I'm going to rotate it so it's on point. And you can spend like a lot of time just auditioning and playing with different options with your quilts. I'm going to make that fit this square. Do, 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 do. And actually, it's not wide enough, so I'm going to, here's a trick, I'm going to rotate it so I can just pull it out slightly from this side, make it a little bit wider that way. Then let's rotate it back, see how that fits that square. Oh, much better. Okay, put it in the center. Then when I go to save this design to stitch on there, I'm simply going to click the one design, copy it, create a new page, right click, paste it. Now I will do a lot of things. I'm going to save it in the format for my machine by clicking File, Save As, and I will save it as, you know, uh, Block Center, or we can do Teal Block and make it whatever format you need for your machine, like a VP3, and save it in that format to your stick or whatever you need to take it to your embroidery machine. Then what I would also do with that is come in and print a template, so for placement. Because on my machines, 
I don't have that camera function, which is so nice and lovely. I, I have to use templates or target stickers to place it in the center of my block, measure that block and go, this is the center. So I like to use templates because I can see through our print and stick target paper and print it directly on that. It prints the arrows for me in my settings. I want to make sure that I print it actual size because a template that isn't the actual size of the design really doesn't do you any good as far as placement is concerned. Um, if I had artworks in there, I could do it. 3D, stitches, you know, that's th those are the parameters that I've selected for this. And then I would print it. I could also, let's go back a step. Take it off of the print function. One of the things that, that has been added to the software that I just love are the notes. I can put a note on here. So I can type here on my note. This is the teal center block. And apply that. And then I'll just move it over here. The, the note is simply artwork. Now, when I go to print that template, I select it and it prints right there on the template for me so I don't get confused as to what design goes where. All right. Any well, other questions, Dory? I'll tell you, I like that particular um, function right there. I do. Get oh, confused. the notes are great. That yeah. was, and, and you know, honestly, uh, that was something Eileen added to the software and I didn't quite get it at first. Uh, which I know it's not a great surprise to you, Dory, but um, it has been a lifesaver some, for so many things when I'm working on it. Go, oh, this is this block, or I've actually done one where I said, okay, so here's the center. You know, that should go to the, the center of, you know, this set of blocks. Um, I knew what I meant, and, and it really, you know, makes sense, makes it very yep. easy to work with. Well, and that, if you uh, separate all of your blocks, now, how would you go, uh, you flicked, and I, I'm waving the screen. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I was trying okay. to get back to the it way we were working. It is very easy on this particular design to see where I would break up or separate each block mm -hmm. in order right. to do a um, complete unit. Um, right. When you're in one of the... Uh, stiplings that have stippling all over. How do mm -hmm. you, what uh, what helps you to determine, to determine where to break it up in order to stitch it? Well, it, it okay, that's a great question. Now, um, with this particular type of thing, I like to design to the, the, the block. Um, and put the stitches in that way. So I would, if I just wanted the design in the teal and everything else to be stippled, then I'm going to select those pieces like that, combine them, and then convert them to some stitch, like stipple or advanced stipple. Let's do advanced stipple. Um, let's do, oh, I know. Let's go to texture, which basically is the same thing. It's just that the texture stitches are that are also in Perfect Embroidery Pro. The advanced stipple stitches are only in my uh, quilt embellisher. Let's make that pattern a lot bigger. It's just a fill design. Um, let's make it 25. Okay, so now I've got a fill in there, and I do want to make sure it fits. That one's a little bit big. Um, oh, no, I just had moved it, sorry, from my backdrop. Anyway, I would select that design again, copy it. Once I, I audition the whole thing, and actually, let me bring up one that I've done that with. Uh, new page, let me bring up the backdrop. Because I played with this for a real long time. This is a quilt, or small ball hanging, actually, that I did. And again, I used the same procedure to put them together. 
and uh, it was all done in the software. Then in my designs, I have Ode to Cologne, which is the name of this quilt. And here are, there's my final. Okay, so let me pull that in, line these up so you can see better. Because I wanted to see, actually, a little bit too small for the backdrop. Okay. Um, I wanted to see what the whole quilt would look like before I ever started sewing it or quilting it. I am not good friends with my seam ripper. So if I can audition my design on the quilt before I ever take a stitch, I am a much happier camper. Now you see what I did here. I've got this circle effect going around these four blocks. Then in here, I have this line. Let me put it on 3D to show you a little better. I have this arrow design, which is actually, when I ungroup it, because I pulled it in from the library, if I select that, that is a shape echo, and I simply moved, it's a square, and I simply moved the center of it to the center of this dot. If you look at the shape here, here's the center of it. Okay, so I took both of these, moved the center of the shape outside of the area to get that effect. It's a real fun thing to play with, and I highly recommend that you do that. Then I have stippling inside of here. This is another shape echo in the red blocks. And I just take and save these individual designs. Let me select it without the shape tool. And print a template, and it's very simple to go about stitching that because they're all hoopable areas. Ooh, I like that. Well, I want you to know, my friend Dottie said, I can see ideas going through my mind and thinking how much fun it would be to use particular stitch just on the sashing strips. Yeah. So have I mean, stimulated brain matter tonight. Oh, good, good. Now, now, if you want to add sashing and things like that, you could absolutely do that. Remember, you have an artwork tool up here. You want to create um, a border around this quilt. This quilt is, hmm, let me see how big my quilt is. It is like 24 by 24. I could make a 24 inch square and put a little square. You know, you can create that and create designs for it. Now with that, I would break it up into sections that are hoopable. I don't know about Dottie, but I don't have a 24 inch hoop. But that being said, those of you who have a long arm with robotics, use the space that you have and you could certainly separate this into sections you know you could come in and select all of that okay and copy it and let's go to a new design and paste it and then take and save it file save as give it a name you know, that's the top half of, you know, that section and save it in a format for your long arm machine Ooh, that it will read. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. So, Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. Any other questions before we? No. Um, out? You've got the endless hoop and you can split designs in PEP. I mean, what, yes, what you can. Do you want? Oh, I don't know. But, uh, well, a bigger hoop, always. Yeah, there um, you go. But, right. but in the meantime, we've got the split feature, so in PEP. Yes, we do. Thank you so much, Tamara. Oh, this thank you, Dory. Fun. And um, thanks to um, everybody who helped tonight. And we will see you next month and we'll, when we talk about artwork, which thank is fun, you. and cutters. Okay, good night. Good night.